Yep. Yes, sir, bro. So let's go, dog. Bring us home, man. Seattle Seahawks, man. What's 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 going on there, dog? Oh well, this was gonna be fast. I mean, the Seahawks barely had a draft, but let's take a look at what they did and who they went with their selections. Round two with the fifty-six pick, they picked up Dwayne Eskridge, wide receiver, Western Michigan. Great pick, and I'm gonna explain to you why in a second. Round four, pick one thirty-seven, Trey Brown, a cornerback out of Oklahoma, and then round six with the two hundred and eighth pick, they went Stone. Forsyth, offensive tackle, Florida. Let's talk about Eskridge here. At 5'9", 190 pounds, Eskridge had 121 catches for 2,244 yards and 15 touchdowns over five years. He got a medical red shirt after breaking his collarbone early in 2019. Named second team All-American All-Purpose by Football Writers Association of America. Named all-conference first-team receiver and second-team returner by Pro Football Focus. Led the FBS in all-purpose yards per game with 213. Yeah, you heard me right, 213. And was the only player in the nation to average more than 200 all-purpose yards per contest. Capped the regular season with 130.7 yards receiving per game. Fourth in the FBFs and tops in the MAC conference. Eighth receive, eight receiving touchdowns led the MAC and ranked 16th nationally at the end of the regular season. His 77.8 kickoff returns yards with, were fifth in the FBS, and he led the MAC conference at the end of the regular season. Was one of the 11 players in the FBS with three or more kickoff returns of at least 40 yards, played both offense and defense during the, his career. Okay, he played offense and defense during his career for all you IDP guys out there. Who knows? Cap WMU tension with 113 receptions for 2,136 yards and 14 TDs with an average of 19.2 yards per reception. Made 21 tackles and a forced fumble and four pass breakups during his time as a cornerback. Went over 100 receiving yards in, six, in five or six games on the abbreviated 2020 seasons. Returned 17 kickoffs on the year for a total of 467 yards with a long being 100-yard TD return against Northern Illinois. I don't know, Brandon. This kid's being majorly disrespected. In rookie drafts, he's falling way out of his rankings, and where he's falling is mega value written all over him. Moore's no longer there. He's in Carolina, and I expect Eskridge to fill in immediately for Moore. Don't sleep on this kid. I'm telling you, I've picked him up super late in rookie drafts. As a matter of fact, today, I picked him up in the third round, okay? I don't want to hear that he's small when we just talked about Rond uh, Rondell Jones. Rondell Moore. I mean, excuse me, Rondell Moore. I don't want to hear this. this. This draft is full of small receivers, so why the hate on this guy? Did you hear the stats I just gave you? Well, dude, I thought I was high on him, bro, until you told me all that shit. And now I want to go out and find and find out where I don't have him and buy him, bro. And I thought I was gonna to have to come out here to um, put put some knowledge on him, but you just blew me away. I'm gonna to have to give you props on that information. The only way I can tell you is why I think people are disrespecting him is is a couple of things you said. The five years in college, right? Five years. He's coming out as a 24 year old rookie, and you know that doesn't sound old because I'm old as hell. I'm 40, bro. So 24 doesn't sound as young as fuck. But for a rookie, you know, people get get a little scared away from that. For me, that's a positive. Maybe not for long term. For dynamic, sure. But he's coming out at 24 years old. That means he's got a man's body. He's not mm -hmm. a 20 year old rookie who's not developed yet. He's been in the weight room. He's been working. He's got he's got the knowledge of a 24 year old. He, he's gonna come out and he's not gonna be pushed around by those corners like some rookies will. So I agree with you. He's gonna come out. I think he's gonna play well. He's gonna play early. He's gonna play well, and he's probably gonna have more value earlier in his career than later. But now, that's why now's the time to grab him because I agree with you 100. percent let me tell you, this guy is physical. He played cornerback. You think that he's not going to know how to get off a cornerback off the line? This guy's going to mop the cornerbacks because he knows exactly what the cornerbacks are going to try and do to him because he played cornerback. And he had a forced fumble. This kid, I mean, just the experience of playing the opposite position of what you're playing against in a football game, that, that for me is knowledgeable. I see Russell Wilson falling in love with this kid and – all the attention is going to be on Metcalf and Lockett. I see this kid's first year being great. I, I don't see anybody even paying attention to this kid. And I see this kid 
having a great rookie season, man. And where he's getting drafted right now, you guys just got to go out and get him. Please don't sleep on this guy. There's nothing to sleep on this guy about. Just because he's 24 years old, it's like Brandon said, it's not a negative for us in our eyes. It's a positive. Meaning he's like, got a man's body. Not only that, he has more experience on the football field, man. And he's more physical. He played cornerback. That's a very, very sharp edge for him. Let me tell you, because he's going to know exactly what they're going to do to him, when, where, and how. So that's a major, major edge to play with. I agree, man. I agree 100%, dude. Yeah, so uh, we're just about done, man. I hope you guys enjoyed all our breakdowns for all the divisions.